Good morning. Welcome to this series of videos where we are going to learn how to use planned simulation. We're going to see from scratch how the software works, what are the most important elements that we should know, and we are going to solve exercises step by step to solidify the concepts. If you are already an experienced planned simulation user and want to go one step further, I recommend my other series of videos on programming in SimTalk, where we do more advanced exercises. Plant Simulation is a discrete event simulation program that helps create digital models of logistics and production systems. Almost any process can be simulated where different productive elements are integrated with input and output of parts. The types of projects that can be carried out in plant simulation range from facility capacity analysis, warehouse sizing or process sizing, to material flow optimization, bottleneck detection, and more complex analysis. For this series of videos, I am going to base myself on the latest version of Plant Simulation available at the time of making these videos, which is 2201, and we are always going to work with 2D modeling to fully understand the concepts. To start, let's explain the basic elements of the Plant Simulation user interface. The first thing we see when opening the program is this, the classic menu that allows us to create a new simulation model or load the last one we have opened or explore files to load one of the models. First of all, let's define the model preferences by going to File and Preferences. As I said before, we are going to focus on 2D modeling, so in the General tab we must select the 2OD visualization. If we did not have this option selected, we would have to select it, press OK, close the program, and reopen it so that the changes are applied to this model. Within this Preferences menu, we can also edit other options such as language, units, size, text editor fonts, etc. I am going to leave everything as it is by default, but for those of you who have not purchased a license, you must use the Student License in the License tab. This license is free and allows you to use most features of plant simulation, including method programming, but limiting the number of objects to 80 per model. However, this is more than enough to perform all the exercises that we are going to see during these videos. So, we save the changes and now we are going to click on a new model. This is what the plant simulation interface looks like when you open the new model. Now we are going to see the main tools that we should know. At the top, we have the different general plant tools, which are these here. The Home, Debugger, Window, and Cloud tab are fixed, while the rest will be modified depending on the window we have open. In this case, by default, when opening a new model, a frame is generated, which is this window here, so above we see the options for this frame. We will see the function of each of these buttons as we progress through the different examples. Don't worry. The next element we will look at is the toolbox, which is this box here. This is the place in the interface where we can have quick access to all the tools and entities necessary for the creation and management of the production process. We can use all these tools by dragging them directly from the toolbox like this, or by simply clicking on them and then clicking on the frame. Once inserted, we can move them around the frame with the arrow or with the arrow keys on the keyboard. We can rotate them by pressing Ctrl plus T, and we can make them bigger and smaller by pressing Ctrl plus star to make them larger and Ctrl plus slash to make them smaller. In turn, we can select several of these elements and modify their position and size together, for example by doing this. Now let's look at the box on the left. This here. This is the class library. Here we have all the objects available for modeling our simulation represented in a hierarchical way. If the toolbox was the shortcut, the class library is the actual location of all these objects, so that any object that includes our model must be referring to one of those that exist here in the class library. This class library can be expanded with more objects than those loaded by default. This is managed from the Manage Class Library option, which is up here in the Home tab of the Buildable Tools. Here we can select which objects we want to add or remove from our library. 
As you can see, almost all of them are included by default, but there are some that are not loaded by default. Keep in mind that some of these objects are restricted to the use of more advanced licenses. That is, if we do not have these licenses, we will not be able to use these objects that we have here, no matter how much it let us load them. To fully understand how the class library works, it is necessary to define the concepts of class and instance. Plant simulation works with a completely hierarchical structure that allows information to be transmitted, both in terms of format and content, always in a descending direction. Making good use of this hierarchical inheritance of information saves a considerable amount of time and effort during modeling a simulation. We are going to review some concepts that must be clear before continuing. For example, what is a class? All objects in the class library, which is represented here in this orange box, are classes or parents. These objects define the attributes that their instances or children will inherit. A subclass would be an object within the class library that derives from another and therefore inherits some of its attributes. They represent an intermediate point between the original class and the instances of this class. For example, here we would have a class object. This class object would have another derivative that would be this subclass, and it would be inheriting some of the attributes of the original class. In contrast, we have the instance. We call that to any object that is inserted in a frame, here represented in black, an instance from the class library. Every time we drag an object from the toolbox or from the class library to a frame, what we are doing is instantiating that object, and that object, therefore, will depend on the parent object from which we have instantiated it. As in the case of the subclass, it will be inheriting some or all of the attributes of the parent. Finally, we have the concept of inheritance. The inheritance are the objects derived from the same parent, that is, all the inheritance that hangs hierarchically from the original parent. If an object has an inherited attribute, any changes to the parent will automatically be made to the child. For example, all the changes we make to this class object will be inherited by these three objects here, both the direct instance and the subclass instance. Let's see all this with a practical example. Let's first create a new folder to include the objects in this example. To do this, we go to the class library, right click on basis, and then select new folder. With this, we create a new folder at the root of the library that by default will be placed here, always at the end. In this case, we will call the folder example class. Next, we are going to copy a class from the conveyor object, which is located here in material flow, specifically here, and we are going to copy it to our example class folder. We have two ways to do it. The first is to right-click and select duplicate. By doing so, plan simulation automatically generates a copy in the user objects folder. Now we drag this copy to our folder while holding down the shift key. Another way to do it, perhaps easier, is to directly drag the class that we want to copy, and when releasing it, hold down the control key. With either way, we are generating a class completely independent of the original class, which is this one here. We are going to keep only one, therefore we can delete this one, and we are going to rename it with right-click rename or F2 parent line. We are also going to create a new frame for this example within this same folder. So again, we have two ways to do it. One would be to drag a class that already exists, such as this one here, and pressing Control when releasing it. The other would be to right-click on the same folder and select New Model Frame. We close the one we had open and keep the one we just created. If we now drag our parent line class over this frame, we are creating an instance or child of this class. Instances, as we mentioned before, can only exist within a frame, and by default they inherit all the attributes of their class. To see it better, we are going to modify some of these attributes in the parent, and we will see how they are also automatically modified in the instance. 
We double-click on the parent to open its configuration menu, which is this window that has just opened. This is where we can modify all the properties of this object, which in the case of the conveyor can be, for example, length, width, speed, etc. The first thing we have to look at is the title of this menu, where we will always find the absolute path of the object we are modifying. This path is built from the root of the class library, that is the basis, and indicates its exact location. In this case, we would be inside the example class folder, the parent line parent object. If we open the same menu but that of the instance, this one here, we will see that all the attributes have the same value, but that in this case the path is no longer the same, the path has changed. In this case, the path tells us that we are modifying an instance that is located within the same folder, but within the frame model that is here as we have already seen. Now we are going to modify some of the properties of the parent so we can close the child. To make it more visual, we are going to modify the color. We open the Curve tab and display the color selectable. We choose one at random, for example, I'm going to select orange, and we apply the changes. We can see how the color of the instance also automatically changes, even though we have not directly modified anything about it. This occurs because the color attribute is being inherited from the class to the instance. If we now open the Instance menu again and go to the Curve tab, we will see that the color has indeed changed here as well. But what happens if we modify the color directly in the instance? For example, I'm going to make it red. When we do this, we see that the small green box next to the color drop-down has changed, and now it is yellow with a black stripe in the middle. If we save this change, we will see that now, no matter how much we modify the color in the parent, the instance will no longer respond to these changes. This is because by modifying the color attribute directly in the instance, we have cut the inheritance of that attribute with respect to its parent. If we want to restore it, we reopen the menu, go to Curve, and we must click on the yellow box to turn it green again. By doing so, we see that it is indeed now inheriting the changes that we had made in the parent, and we actually see it in the color it plays. This action does not allow us to do it in the parent. We can try it, but when applying the changes it will leave it as it was. Since these values are not being inherited from anyone, it is the original class. Another way to view an object's attributes and inheritance is by selecting it and pressing F8. This is a complete listing of all the attributes that this object has. For example, here we have the color attribute that we have been modifying. This would be the numerical form of the color we have selected. In the third column, if we expand it, we can see a tick in those attributes that have active inheritance. Finally, we would need to see an example of a subclass, one that is halfway between a class and an instance. Subclasses are objects that are found in the class library, but that inherit all or part of their attributes from another object in the library. We are going to create a subclass of our parent line object. As in the previous case, we have two ways to do it. The first would be to right-click on the object and select Derive. The other way is to drag the parent to the destination folder we want. In this case, it would be the same folder, and drop it while pressing Ctrl and Shift at the same time. In both cases, we can then move this subclass to any other location in the class library, as we did before, by dragging and pressing Shift. We are going to keep only one of the two that we have generated, and we are going to call it Subclass Line. To make it more visual, we will open the menu of this subclass line and change the length to 5 meters. Next, let's instantiate it here inside the frame. As we see, this instance has also inherited the new color that we had defined for the original class, which was blue. Since this color, 
being defined in the last hierarchically superior parent, is inherited by all elements that hang from it. To better visualize how this inheritance works, we can right-click here on the parent line and select Show Inheritance. If we display the entire tree, for example, here we will see which objects depend on which ones, with their respective absolute paths for each one. Clicking on any of them, for example on this one, we would open its configuration menu. Another way to know which class is immediately above of an instance is by selecting it and then clicking on Home Open Class. With this, we have already taken our first steps in plant simulation. We have learned about its interface and how the class library works. In the next videos, we will see in detail the different objects available to create our simulation models. Greetings and see you in the next video.